For this project, I'm gonna be making one of my favorite layers, the whip tail grub. I'll be using some polymer clay to make a master and a resin mix to create an injection mold before making some bait and finding some fish. My name's Paul Adams, welcome to The Handmade Fisherman. Grub body is essentially just short, fat worms and for that reason, relatively easy to make. I've got some polymer clay here that I've softened up by kneading it and I'm gonna roll that into a short, fat worm, something if you're a regular here, you'll have seen me do quite a few times. Polymer clay is normally available from art shops or online, and it's a really great inexpensive material for quickly making up masters. To cure it, it can just be cooked up in the kitchen oven at low temperature for anything up to half an hour, depending on the make. Because polymer clay is quite a soft material and doesn't hold its shape well while working, I've got a little temp peg here that I'm gonna to add to my worm just by pushing it in. So the aim is to get an even amount of clay all the way around that, but I also need to smear out that joint. Polymer clay can be a bit of a nightmare if I try to work it too quickly or apply too much pressure. It tends to go very soft and sticky like chewing gum, but if I mess up, I can always start again. It really helps to have a clean surface to work on. I'm using just a ceramic tile. I've got this sat on some greaseproof paper, so if I drop it, it won't pick up all the dirt from my bench. So that's the basic shaping done. I'm just sticking down a comb. This is something I've used in previous videos to add a bit of texture. I can just use this to roll on some ribs. But first off, I think I better snip off that bent end. The bit I find the hardest with the ribs is actually getting started. And then because the comb isn't wide enough, lining the grub up again to roll the texture on the other side. But it does help if I stick things down properly. One of the great things about plastic combs is generally they're smooth like the ceramic tile and that smoothness gets transferred onto the clay and ultimately into the mold and onto the finished layer. Because the grub tapers to the ends, I need to turn it round to add texture to the other side. So that's the, the body done. I'm gonna make a few more of these just in case I mess up again and it give me something to choose from. Oddly enough, I'm rolling out another worm. This is a lot thinner than the grub at about five millimeter. To turn this into a tail, I've got a little bit of plastic that I've cut from a document envelope. I can lay this down on my tile and using something round, this is a plumbing fitting, just lay that in the center. I can then just work this worm around it. I want a kind of question mark shape. That looks about right. I'm just gonna pop that out the middle and, and fold that other part back over it. I've got a smaller piece of ceramic tile here. I'm just gonna press that down and flatten it. I'm looking to get a thickness of about one and a half to two millimeter, it doesn't have to be exact. And that looks about right. And I can just peel that layer off. So I need to get it off the other side of that plastic sheet, but I don't want to lay it directly on that ceramic tile because there's a good chance it'll stick to it while I'm cooking it. So I've got some silicon baking sheet here this was used in a previous project to actually make a whip tail for a wooden layer. I'm just gonna lay this down on here and lay the tail face down. If I can just get that end, I should be able to peel the plastic off cleanly. There we go. So that's one down, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna make a few more of these like the grubs and then get on with baking them. For the baking, I placed the bodies in a dish so the wire ends would hold them off the surface. 
preventing flat spots while cooking. I set the timer for 30 minutes and baked them on the lowest setting in the kitchen oven. The tails I added about halfway through to semi-cure them, leaving a bit of flexibility which helps when making the moulds. So these have had a good chance to cool down. Um, I'm going to try putting the tail on this big one first just to make it easy. What I first need to do is just push this, ah, it's sliding, push the bar through. So I've got a hacksaw blade here and what I'm going to do is just delicately try and saw down the middle. Fingers crossed. Polymer clay has a frustrating mix of strengths and weaknesses and for that reason I'm supporting the ends by pinching them together because there's a good chance the blade will just push the sides out and snap them off. Once I've taken the slot down to a depth of about quarter of an inch, six millimeter, I can use a little needle file to open it up and make any adjustments. It didn't take long to get a good fit with the tail I'd chosen, and then I could actually move on to trimming the tail itself. There isn't any rule book to follow here, so I just went with what looked good to me. And I ended up knocking down some of the sharper edges with some 120 grit paper. To fix the joint, I used a tiny amount of super glue on the tail and then just pushed it into place, pinching everything together for a couple of seconds to get a good bond. So that's the, the master done. It's come out really quite well. There's a couple of little holes either side of this uh, blade here that need filling and that's where the temp peg was. I could just put some more polymer clay into there. It doesn't need to be heat treated. It's just really for the mold. I'm pretty pleased with that, but I need to get some stuff together to actually make an injection mold for this. Having covered making injection molds for soft plastic baits in recent videos, rather than repeat that, I thought I'd give an overview of the process I use in this video and post links to those videos for people looking for more detail. I started by baking up a thick disc of polymer clay with some of the tent peg shoved in it. Once removed, I could fit this to my grub and secure it with some super glue. For a mold box, I stole some of the kids' Lego again and filled it with ordinary modelling clay before flattening it off. After pushing the grub in a little, I used a clay tool to scrape away some material until I could push the grub in comfortably to the halfway point. Then with another little clay sculpting tool, I cleaned up and made a neat seam. To create some dimples in the clay to act as keys, I used the dome off the end of a paintbrush handle. This will help me locate the mould back together when it's finished. Then I added another layer of Lego and gave everything a good coat of Vaseline, taking any excess off the grub. To use the two part resin, I measured out a small amount of part one and roughly the same amount of aluminium powder. Then after mixing these together, I added the other part of the resin. After mixing, I poured it on and ran it round the mould a few times to get rid of any air until it began to set up and gel. Then I could add a second thicker layer to top it up. Once that had gelled, I poured on another very thin layer and added a piece of aluminium kitchen trim that I drilled some holes in. This was to act as reinforcement to save me adding more resin. After leaving it to cure for a couple of hours, I could break open the mould and then remove the modelling clay and also spend a bit of time really cleaning things up. To cast the other side of the mould, I built up another Lego mould box and as an afterthought, I decided to add some embossed lettering that I'd picked up at the art shop. This is plastic and self-adhesive, so it should release from the resin. To make the injection tube, I roughed up some 22mm copper pipe and super glued this into place on the back of the polymer clay disc. It was then back out with the Vaseline, giving everything a good coat, apart from the pipe which needed to be cast in place. Then it was just repeating that process of adding the resin as I'd done on the other side. The mould came apart pretty easily, but the camera wasn't actually running. 
But getting the master out was another story and it took quite a bit of persuasion. Finally, I filed a little vent hole in the end of the tail to let the air out of the mold. And after checking it all went back together okay, it was time to cook up some plastic. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with cooking up soft plastics. It's not the most difficult thing to do. It's basically just a case of heating up some liquid PVC in a microwave and stopping every now and again to mix it up. It normally goes through a gel stage and then as it further heats up back to a liquid, I can add a few colors and have a mess round before bringing it back up to temperature. But hot sticky plastic needs some respect and dressing up in a mask and donning the gloves can feel a bit like getting ready for a mission to Mars. I always find it takes a little bit of time to get to know any new mold. They seldom work perfectly straight from the get go but after a bit of experimentation, I found that if I filled the mold at an angle and then tilted it back before pushing the plunger home, it worked pretty well. The plunger in this case was just a, a dowel with a tap washer screwed in the end, which made a reasonable fit. With small layers, it seldom takes more than a couple of minutes for them to cool enough to open the mold. And that's maybe due to the aluminium in the resin conducting the heat quickly away. Then it's just repeat until you think you have enough to go fishing. That last bit of underwater footage and the bits I've used throughout the video were taken yesterday morning down at a local lake, but it wasn't really till I got home and kind of reviewed them on the computer that I could actually see the effect that that grub had had on the little population of fish there, which were all sticklebacks. It was almost like I'd put on a little puppet show for them, jigging the grub up and down, but it was amazing to see just how it held their attention and how they reacted to it and moved with it. Although I did manage to get out last week and test it on some slightly larger fish, although not that much larger as pike go. This small jack was caught at a local lake using a standard jig head. But one of the great things about whiptail grubs is they can be added to other baits as tails. And that's what I did with this small jerk bait to find myself another little pike on a much larger lake. Despite being a small fish, it really engulfed the lure and I had to cut the trace and feed the lure out through the gills. But it went back unharmed, just a, a little eager to get away. I'll be back soon with some more tackle making experiments, but I'll leave you with some more footage of the sticklebacks and the grubs. Thanks for watching. Joey, it's a camera! They're filming us! I tell you, it's the feds! It's the feds! I'll bite them, I tell you! I'll bite their faces! I'll get them all over!